Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Brunswick's Best, where Lance takes a look back at the greatest players in Minnesota Vikings history. This week, spotlighting the number 18. And I'm guessing there's one or two guys here that we can talk about tonight. So uh, pretty, I'm, you know, no big names or anything, but there's a couple of guys. But <laughs> with that, why don't you lay the list on us there, Lance? Well, be before I start here, why not let the rabbit out of the bag? We can't wait to talk to you guys on Friday about the 53-man initial roster set. And don't forget to watch the show because we'll be discussing all that Friday night. So, with that being said, let's get this Brunswick's best started with none other than Harry Newsom, the punter. Uh, Harry came to the Vikings in 1990 after a five-year run with the Pittsburgh Steelers. When it comes to punters, there isn't a whole lot to talk about, to be completely honest with you. Um, though he did finish in the top 10 in punting average in three of his four seasons with Minnesota. Newsom does have the uh, distinction of having more punts blocked than any punter in NFL history with 14, but only two of those came while he was a member of the Vikings. Harry, for all that, you make the list this week. Moving along, we need we need special teams guys on this list, man. We need special teams guys. All right. So, um, moving along, Sidney Rice. I know that most of you guys that are you know recent fans or you know semi recent fans uh, should know who Sidney Rice is. Uh, was a wide receiver. Sidney Rice was a second round pick of the Vikings in two thousand and seven, and spent much of his career plagued by injuries. He did have one truly great season in purple, and that came in 2009. Serving as Brett Favre's primary, I'm just going to chuck it up and you go get it receiver. Rice caught 83 passes for 1,312 yards and eight touchdowns that year. He couldn't match it at all after that as he only played in six games the next season because of injuries and then moved on to play three years with the Seahawks before ultimately hanging them up. Sydney, for all the excitement you brought us here in 2009 and a few other spots in your career, you make the list this week. Moving along to a small name, something that you might be familiar with, and that guy is none other than Justin Jefferson. Now, since joining the league, Jefferson has been named to the Pro Bowl and the All-Pro team in each of his first three seasons. In 2022, at 23 years old, he became the youngest player to lead the league in receptions with 128 and receiving yards with 1,809, earning himself Offensive Player of the Year honors and amassing the most receiving yards through a player's first three seasons and he did this easily i think he had it by like what was it like week 10 of this last season that he had beaten the record okay um, well somewhere in there yeah right and just his first three seasons with the vikings jefferson has posted 324 receptions for 4825 yards and 25 touchdowns now honestly this guy is probably the most electric receiver since Randy Moss to suit him up, you know, and honestly, we could be seeing greatness right in front of our faces. We are. I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is the once in a lifetime type of player. Thankfully, as a Vikings team, we've been blessed by getting some decent generational talent within the last 30 years or so. I mean, even since we even since we franchised up back in the 60s. We've been nailing them, you know, but we just need to get it put together and get that ring, man. So, with that being said, I do have one honorable mention, and that is none other than wide receiver, kick returner, Corn Robinson, who made the Pro Bowl in his one season with the Vikings in 2005, largely because of his kick return prowess. However, he ran into personal issues during the 2006 preseason, and the Vikings let him go. That one season he did play for us, though, was pretty outstanding, to say the least. I was rooting for the dude, but he let his personal demons 
uh, get the best of him. And uh, he was out of the league shortly after that. So that completes my list. JJ, Sydney, Newsome, Austrix, Corn Robinson. All right. And with that, that is all we have for tonight's episode. I want to again thank everybody for watching. As Brunswick had mentioned at the start of the show, make sure you tune in Friday night, 6 p.m. for the regular Vikings Uncensored Studio Show, where we will break down the final 53-man roster, uh, talk about some of the guys that got cut, a few surprises, uh, guys that we thought were going to be locks to make it didn't, a couple of guys that we thought probably were uh, gone are still on the roster. Uh Rumblings of some potential trades that still might be going down. So we'll keep you up to date on all the latest with that on Friday. Again, uh, next week, full slate of shows as well. Rhinos rants on Monday. And then we'll start it all over again with Brunswick's Best and another studio show leading up to the season opener. With our season, like, outline of a show. So we're back to that format again. Be interesting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, well, we're going to mix things up a little bit this year and try a few different things, but stay, stay tuned. Uh, all your latest and greatest Vikings news and opinions right here on Vikings Uncensored. With that, you guys have a great evening, and we will see you Friday. Let's go. Sidney Rice and the wide receivers. Far looking for Rice. He's got it for a touchdown. <laughs> on first and goal, Far. Yeah, eight plays later, far to Rice. Throw it up nice and tall. He's 6'4 for a reason. Outdoorsman on third down. Far backpedaling as he lost it for Rice. How good is that combo? That's their third of the day. Touchdown, Vikings. Just moments ago, Kirk Cousins play fake, deep shot. Has his man, and it's Justin Jefferson who beats the second defensive back. And look at the rookie just going in, tap dancing into the end zone there for a 71-yard touchdown. As we welcome you to Orchard Park with two minutes left in a four-point game. Kirk Cousins back to throw on fourth and 18. He's given time. He wants Jefferson. Climbs the ladder. Oh, my goodness. Justin Jefferson pulled it in. The catch of his life. But we got to look back at this. How does he maintain possession all the way through? Not allow that ball to hit the ground. And he just steals After it the play, from Cam Lewis. Foul, unnecessary reference, defense number 47. That's a 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down.